Hello, my friends, family, esteemed colleagues. Uh, this video, I want to kind of use to clarify certain things which are standing in a way of us understand, understanding actually what is going on. The problem lies in our programming in our indoctrination system. When uh, body wants to tell us something and we don't listen, it increases the intensity of the message, ultimately causing pain. We can avoid this if we listen to the body when it gives us more subtle signal, but we ignore them. And when discomfort and pain becomes intolerable, this is usually when we ask for help. Unless it's something really doesn't hurt you uh, strong enough, you will not go to uh, look for help. Most common thing is we eat incorrectly, we have maldigestion, our gut hurts already, we are full of gas, and our excuse is, well, but it's healthy. So, yeah, I guess uh, it hurts, but we are eating healthy because we are supposed to eat this kind of food. We are trusting what we are being told more than what we actually experience. But another phenomenon is happening now with, which I see when uh, people contact me or make comments. Uh, most time People are misunderstanding the messaging. When uh, they do something out of ordinary, it's contrary to what they have been programmed with through uh, science, and by the response, right away the culprit is the latest action. For example, you feel reasonably okay and now you hear that it is good to put some salt in the body and you ingest salt, minerals, your blood plasma jumps a little bit, the body finds opportunity to use this now to cleanse some of the toxins out. And since the blood is very toxic, you're going to maybe feel nausea as the toxic mucus starts seeping into your stomach or get diarrhea when it seeps into your intestines. And now we resonate, oh, salt is bad. You see, it made me nauseous and gave me diarrhea. Salt is bad. Well, we have to understand that nausea, diarrhea, urination, defecation, sweating, those are all symptoms of body releasing something that it does not want to hold. Most of it is toxic to us. This is why body rejects it. Yet, we have a wise guys and 
girls saying, well, drinking piss is really good for the body because this is the pristine water. Well, if it would be the pristine water, you are not going to be eliminating it. It is being used as a vehicle to get something out of the body that should not be there. Either by this being a toxic thing that your body does not tolerate, or excessive amount of something that body uses, but now it's in excess. Body needs to get it out. Like, for example, having a sugar in the urine. Or having calcium in the urine. Okay, should not be there. But if the level of these things is in the blood higher than it should be, the body is going to try to manage it. And if it has plenty of plasma and does not have to save it, well, it is going to use the plasma for elimination. If it is low on plasma, it will look for other options or different type of elimination. I mentioned very often that urine, urinating, you waste a huge amount of plasma, not water, because you don't hold water in your body, you hold plasma, mineralized water, electroconductive water. And this is what you use to cleanse out what the body does not want. So you lose a little bit less water, the toxin is more concentrated in a mucus tissue through mucus. And because it's more concentrated, stronger, it is then going to be rejected for absorption in the, in, from intestines, and it may cause a violent reaction of the body, like vomiting or diarrhea. If toxic, toxicity is strong and body cannot afford to waste any plasma or let's say minimal amount of plasma mucus is not going to be created but body will go into a little sweat and try to get toxins out or open up as a pimples push toxins through pores to sweat glands in the form of concentrated poison. We call pus, we call pimples, toxic liquid, like bubbles, like herpes, shingles. It's all toxin. Now, I hear very often that now from carnivore or community because of agenus that oh, we should not be drinking water we get everything what is in uh, what our body needs we get it right from a raw meat and again yes it is true if you haven't been poisoned. But we are born of toxic mothers. Why? Because they follow soyans. They are treated by 007 agents. Although they might have in mind that they are helping, that they are doing good. But we have been indoctrinated in misunderstanding how body works so doctors have no clue that they are actually creating diseases no clue 
they see that things are not going better, they know that they are not healing. This is why the word healing does not exist in medical field. We are just helping the body so you live longer in, with your misery. Well, they admit it. They know. This is what we have been told openly. Everything that happens with you is either caused by pathogen or it's genetic glitch or autoimmune or aging, you know, cannot get good direction, getting old. Oh, but I'm only 30. Well, you're old. Huh? Nonsense. But indoctrinated mind cannot see the nonsense because it was trained only to memorize and repeat and ignores personal experiences. It just accepts status quo the way it was trained. Very few people have escaped the indoctrination, uh, not process, but escape to be indoctrinated in the level that it locks them in this in this uh, package. Great majority of doctors are deadly afraid of salt, cholesterol. Deadly afraid. Because they don't understand them. They are being portrayed like a boogeyman and this is what it remains. Many people say to me, well, why do I have to drink so much salt? Show me animal in nature that is taking this much salt. Well, we have to understand that one thing is to have maintain a healthy lifestyle and another thing is to heal. If you are young and not overly toxic, which is impossible because of many of those things, and the diet unless you are living in jungle or uh, at sea fishing and eating what you catch you are eating toxic food every packaged stuff in a stupid market is pure poison every single one just look at the ingredients all you need is meat and let's say you like carbohydrates. Okay, so you have carbohydrates. But what is all the other 50 ingredients that is in there? So all poisons. Every single one of them. So we are being loaded with toxic stuff. Now when you start eating correctly, well, you already accumulated this toxic stuff. Because you were not hydrating. The more toxic stuff you take, the more hydrated you have to become to eliminate this toxic stuff. You need plasma to flush the system out. But nobody does it. And when you drink, you are being told, whoa, drink coffee, tea, that's great. Both of them are toxic. Even herbal tea. Very often I'm being asked, Darko, but you know, what about like peppermint tea? You know, or what about fruit trees, uh, food teas? Well, they don't have 
some toxic ingredients like ca caffeine for example but listen to your body when you drink tea doesn't matter what tea after you drink the cup of tea your mouth is dry why because it's toxic it's a plant it's toxic and body closes down and wants to eliminate it so right away you need to put plasma in so you allow body to get out the stuff because mucosal tissue mouth will absorb same happens with your complete digestive tract especially colon but because it's toxic the cells cringe they don't want to absorb absorption is slowed down but still you cannot stop it you didn't stop it because it was not toxic enough if it's the more toxic it is the more violent reaction to it you are going to have if you put in your mouth something that is moderately toxic well body will accept it it will go through but it is going to create the problems usually it's the cringing is the cells closing the membranes reducing their size absorption is getting worse more liquid stays in the intestines and you are going to have maybe a pastier stool softer stool more toxic the stuff the tighter the membranes and then the sensor kick in and if it's overly toxic then the sensor says okay we are not allowing this to pass and you get nausea and you throw up now this toxin may be something that you just ate but when you did not have opportunity to cleanse for longer period of time you are going to be accumulating these toxins in a subcutaneous tissue in the connective tissue in the fatty tissue in organs and when opportunity arises when cleansing is triggered these toxins will be released end up in the blood and from blood they will be taken out through blood cleansing organs kidneys mucosal tissue and skin and this is where you get symptoms so if you feel nauseated and you ate something most likely you ate something toxic but if you feel nauseated and you did not eat anything or you didn't eat anything that should be toxic well the toxin is coming from your body what released the toxin salt minerals increased level of minerals especially if they are accompanied with water the plasma what is plasma other than seawater natural well naturally also water from a well is already mineralized water from a river is already mineralized it went through soil and it absorbed minerals but not in high level this is not going to make big difference to the body it may need way more so when you take milk well milk is plasma milk is plasma that contains also uh, nutrients proteins and fats so when you drink milk or yogurt and all of a sudden your skin erupts people say ah you're allergic to milk no your body receives plasma 
And since you are very toxic, especially in your subcutaneous tissue, toxins will be released. And instead of going into circulation and out through mucosal tissue or through mucus or, or, or urination or defecation, it will be pushed to sweat it out. And it goes to your skin and it creates reaction of the skin to toxic, to increase toxicity. Again, the toxin could be poison ivy from outside, but if you didn't put anything on the skin that should cause this reaction, the poison comes out from your body. So instead of crying, oh, your milk is killing me, look, cheese was killing me, look what is happening with my skin, you should celebrate. My body is releasing toxins. Great. Yeah, but it's itchy. It's not pleasant. To look at it, we don't feel comfortable. So, yeah, put smear on body, anything that will stop this. What will stop it? Poison. Stronger poison than this one. So cell, instead of cleansing, they close down again. They stop releasing the poisons. What is out already slowly will be cleansed and skin calms down. Every medication is suppressing natural detox and healing of the body. Every single one. There is no big difference between pharmaceutical and what we call natural. You are dealing with toxin. Sometimes you can take a medication, pharmaceutical or natural, to affect particular issue in the body. We're, here we are talking about frequencies. To affect certain frequency, to make change, yes. And this way you don't go into full detox. You target certain area and it gets a little better. And as soon as it gets better, oh, I'm healed. This is ah, it's nowhere close to healing. You just patched it up a little bit. Lately, oh, I remember when I was a kid, the pharmacy, they were preparing potions. They were using actual medicinal remedies and created, creating what you should be given to deal with the problem that you have. But then, since Rockefellers took over, they stopped. Now pharmacy is like a supermarket. Actually, there is no difference. You go to supermarket, half of it is pharmacy. You go to pharmacy, half of it is supermarket. Your food is as toxic as the medication they give you. And thinking that we don't have to purge. That just by eating correctly, this is going to solve the problem. It's not true. It's not happening. And again, if you are satisfied with status quo, then eat correctly, drink water that has minerals in it. So unless it comes from a river or well, add a little bit of minerals in there. Now again, a lot of gurus are there. Your soul is a rock. Rock body cannot use rocks because it's not organic. There is no such a thing as organic or inorganic. Those are elements. We call them organic if they are used in a body or in a living, what we call living thing, because we simply are brainwashed. We don't understand that there is no such a thing as a dead thing, because everything vibrates. If it doesn't vibrate, 
it doesn't exist in your reality. Everything is living thing and conscious. It's created by consciousness. And every living thing or everything that exists because of a programming is afraid of changes. Every single thing. So, saying that our uh, soul is a dead thing, rock, and you take it in, it doesn't serve you for anything, then why are you giving salt to cow or to sheep or to the goat if it's dead thing? And if it serves them, why it doesn't serve us? What is chelation? It's again our stupidity. We are just misled. And we take it for given. Everybody who goes in nature has to have encountered a plant growing from a rock. There's a little rock, or, and then sometimes you have a tree, bush, bigger bush, and it's on a rock, growing from the rock. Plants create acids. We call them humic acids. Acids dissolve minerals. So the acid is going to liquefy the mineral and then plant will absorb this mineral. Liquefied mineral may be washed by rain into the soil it may be washed from the soil into the stream, into the river, and ends up at a sea. And you evaporate the sea and you get those minerals that through humic acids turn stone into salts. They liquefy. Make it in very small, we call them particles. Originally, it's not particle, it is energetic point, a particular structure, geometric structure. And this is what crystals are. You look at them under microscope. They're geometric structures. So, anybody that tells you that uh, minerals have to be chelated, they have no idea what they're talking about. They're just repeating the scientific baloney. It's not true there. And since it is all energy, it can be created from thin air. It's created by consciousness. And everything is created from thin air. Even the thin air is created by consciousness. So this is understanding a little bit on a deeper level from the plane where well, I can see it, I can smell it, so it's here. Because many things you cannot see, you cannot smell. But you know they are there because maybe you can feel them. If you just want to, if you are young and you just want to live healthy, eat correctly, go to raw meat diet, meat and dairy, anything from uh, animal world. 
and uh, drink water from a well or river. If you take distilled water, you are already going to cleansing out and diluting your minerals in the body and dehydrating yourself. But if you have to deal with cleansing, if you want to cleanse, you want to heal something, you start bringing more salt. This way you are forcing body to eliminate the surplus of the salt and this triggers the frequency of cleansing. And the more of surplus you bring in to the body, that is not toxic, it's just surplus. So it is not harming the body, it's not making cells to cringe, to lower, to, to shut the membranes. It is just going to force the body to eliminate them. But then you have to not just take the salt, you have to provide the water, otherwise you dehydrate by elimination. But if you are eliminating through plasma, then your body is only going to use the surplus. So it will be hydrating and cleansing at the same time. And this is why sometimes it is necessary to drink huge amounts of water. Because if you get hard stool, it means you are low on plasma. Your body is trying to suck every single drop of plasma from your intestines, bring it back into circulation. This is what makes the stool dry and hard. This is what causes constipation. If your minerals are coming from a meat only, there are, there, there's plenty of mineral there sufficiently to support you, but there's not enough plasma for cleansing. Every lion, every tiger drinks, usually in the morning and at night. They drink because they have to eliminate. You are using water to eliminate, but since your body cannot use water only because it will lose electroconductivity, it needs salt. I just made an article about the refeeding syndrome. Another bullshit science causing lack, lack of minerals and the symptoms that this provides, giving it a label of refeeding syndrome. And you can go and check the article. It is just misunderstanding. And then people get it in the head. Oh, that's a syndrome. That's a real disease. You see, doctors know it. And ah, oh, you see, I, I had a little bit of milk and I got refeeding syndrome. You didn't get any refeeding syndrome. You get elimination, cleansing syndrome. And you need to provide more, otherwise you get constipated. This is why I say maintain diarrhea. Because if your body will have diarrhea, it means that you are drinking enough plasma and the surplus is being used to cleanse very toxic blood. And you don't have to worry about getting dehydrated. You are actually hydrating while having diarrhea, which to doctors in, in, is impossibility because again, we are being told to keep away from salt. So if you try to hydrate with water, or even worse, distilled water, you will be, you will be demineralizing yourself and actually dropping your, your state of hydration. Because if you cannot hold minerals, if you don't have minerals, you cannot hold water. Because you lose electroconductivity. Why people, when they are severely dehydrated, let's say, um, in a desert without water and now you give them water why do they have to drink slowly because if you give them bigger amount of water they are already very dehydrated which means level of blood is low level of blood plasma is very low and now if you start loading it quickly 
with inadequate liquid, with water without enough minerals, the electron conductivity drops. No energy. You croak. You die. So you have to hydrate very slowly so the body can then, according to the water, maybe it can grab some minerals from your bones, bring from a bone some mineral in there. And little by little, at least get enough blood uh, plasma so you can start walking and, and, and moving around. It is much better to actually drink seawater. Or if, if you have choice of those two. But again, when you drink seawater, you cannot go and uh, just drink half a liter in one gulp of seawater because your level of minerals are going to be so high and you did not give time for a body to calibrate. Body calibrates. So you sip it little by little or let it in through the skin. Soak yourself. And it's going to be coming in and your body will start right away separating surplus and your urine, your sweat becomes saltier than seawater. Because in a seawater, you can still take a bunch of salt, put it there, mix it, and it will dissolve. So it's much higher capacity. You don't have to worry that you are going to kill yourself by drinking seawater. I tried it. I did a test. Other tests have been done where people have were left drifting in a seawater for weeks. None of them had any problems. Actually, they felt really very good afterwards because the body was cleansing all the time. Hydrating and cleansing. We say, oh, too much salt. Then you have a two schools, depending how it suits your narrative. Either, oh, it's going to dehydrate you because you see you put salt on the meat and it dehydrates. And on the other side, you have the doctors, oh, you put salt, it holds more water, so you're going to have high blood pressure and it is going to be creating uh, water retention and destroying your kidneys. Well, which one is it? It all depends on circumstance, how you do this. And remember, body is a programmed robot. It's programmed to take care of itself. It's highly adjustable. But every change has to be gradual. And again, don't be afraid of sea, of seawater. If you are stranded somewhere, you don't need to take these desalinating machines. You can drink seawater, but little by little, just little sip, little sip, swallow, and body will be eliminating surplus of the soul and functioning with seawater. This is not me talking. Many people have been stranded at sea and they had no other choice but drinking seawater and they all survived and they were all healthy afterwards. Skinny, but healthy. 40 days, 60 days, let's see. Drinking seawater. Yet we are being told, I oh, don't ever, it's going to kill you. Well, it's a science. Decouple from science. You have to forget everything you have been told in the school. Everything. Everything that church tells you. Everything any religion tells you. You have to throw all this in the garbage and start fresh. Because all is based on lies. A little bit truth and then smeared with all kinds of stuff to make you stupid. To misunderstand. So, read my, my 
uh, articles. I was asked to write a book again, but what's the point when every couple of weeks something new comes and better explanation and we are opening our minds so even the sleepers when they start thinking then things become more obvious the book I wrote uh, 15 years ago the owner's manual for human body it's outdated a lot of it is still true but what I wrote about the non-existent things, well, this was school knowledge. Now, even people that follow my videos, they are realizing, wow, this video is way more precise. You, I understand it so much better than the before. Well, not because I'm talking something different. It is because your brains are opening up. They are starting to resonate with the truth. So, point writing your book. We are progressing. It's like, okay, I want up, uh, the, the, the best possible telephone right now. You buy it today. Tomorrow, it's already outdated because tomorrow is already something else in the telephone. So, read my articles. This is up-to-date stuff coming out. And ask questions. If I know the answer, I'll address it. Or help you with the thinking process. It's raining here. It's going to get noisier and noisier. So I'm going to stop this gibberish. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Open your mind. Push the ego aside. Because nobody knows everything. But don't be afraid of talking. Make a comment. Even if is not something that supports what I'm writing about. You know, I like when people make comment because I can address it. We can make conversation and get to a common ground. Thank you for being here. Love you all. Namaste. God bless you.